Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, June 4th, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, a bit determined length, episode number uh, 697. Wow. And guess what, folks? Happy Pride Month! We did it! We're here! 2023! There's prides actually happening! People are going on the streets! I feel like we should have, like, pre-planned a a very basic dance, (coughs) like, you know, (laughs) dance kind of theme music thing in the background. But anyways. It's Rainy Man or something. I don't know. In any case, uh, hey, guess what? It's one of those shows where we uh, spill the tea. I know that's our 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 our, our like soundbite for that, <laughs> and I get what it, what it's going for, but that's not what Wait that sounds here. like. <laughs> every every time you play it, because I forget about it, it just tickles me to no end. Because it, it makes me you think are I'm the just, one who picked it. I know, but when you hear it, it just I forget about it, and then it just tickles me because it makes me think I'm standing at the eagle in the trough. Right? Like, I just <laughs> oh lord! I mean, it does anyway, sound more of like pouring beverage, not urinating. I right. mean, it, it it's kind of a bit of both. I mean, if you're heavy, you know. No, the, the sound no, is different. actually no. The sound is no. different. The sound is different. It's it similar, is. but but the the like the note <laughs> that yeah the the that it belongs to. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, like the, like this is kind of a more bassy. And of course, we're asked if... okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then no, also, it, you know, and and it and it, it you know, it starts out kind of at a, at a, a higher octave and, and goes down, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you pee, it doesn't sound like that. It's like stays relatively one sound for a period until you stop. Fair, 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 very fair. With that being said, Gary. Um, for those of you that are new to the podcast, I express on behalf of my co-host our sincere apologies that you may not have been ready for that yellow hanky like <laughs> diversion <laughs> at the beginning of the show. But yeah. welcome, welcome to Comes Out Loud because not only are. is it an indeterminate length, it is also just wild, and you just don't know what we're going to say at any moment. Rails? What are those? <laughs> <laughs> Where we're going, we don't need no rails. <laughs> oh, good gravy. Uh, so with that. Yeah, Um. so a couple nights ago at midnight, June 1st, internet and social media codes around the world suddenly swapped their basic images for ones that are suddenly colorful. These versions of corporate logos because, God damn it, gay dollars make the world go round. Hallelujah. We've discussed this several times. 
on this show. Just go back through our catalog. Um, so, of course, the gays, the gays being a very loose term here, awoke in the morning to choose wrath or becoming a demon. And you have to be tuned into the internet meme at this moment to know what that meant. Yeah. Which I means it must be that... S- lost. <laughs> we'll catch you up, Jeff. <laughs> Which means it must be that season again. Pride is here and it is 2023. And the landscape has changed vastly. Drag entertainment is at the height of professional productions. There's like 57 RuPaul's Drag Race like seasons going on simultaneously around the world. Queen of the Universe is airing for a quarter million dollars. Like, I mean, it's just booming. And yet, Mm -hmm. here in the States, uh, legislation has been ongoing to basically reverse the gains that we've had over the most recent years. Right. Right. So as we've been doing this series in the month of June for a couple of years now, uh, I, I'm not real um, in a happy mood <laughs> on this one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's very challenging. But mm-hmm. we'll start off with our first item of news because this, this just happened mm-hmm. yesterday. Yeah, the third. Um, so it was reported that, uh, the law that was passed in the state of Tennessee, which was being called the anti-drag law, was found to be unconstitutional by a federal judge who Mm. happened to be as a U.S. district judge appointed by the former president. So it was being considered someone who's on the conservative side of things, um, and in their mm. judgment said, quote, there is no question that obscenity is not protected by the First Amendment, but there is a difference between material that is, quote unquote, obscene in the vernacular and material that is obscene under the law. Right. He also added, simply put, no majority of the Supreme Court has held that sexually explicit but not obscene speech receives less protection than political, artistic or scientific speech. Right. Um, And kind of put the kibosh on this whole thing that was, you know, uh, happening. And, I mean, there were fundraisers. There was a lot of, like, questions about what was going to happen in Mm -hmm. terms of drag entertainment within that state. Um, Businesses potentially, you know, being forced to, like, do all sorts of things to try to stay in business, so to speak. Um, Yeah, it's been very, very interesting. So uh, I thought the timing of that was curious that it just happened to be the very beginning of Pride Month Mm -hmm. and it also happened to be when this judge released that decision because they didn't have to. I mean, technically, they probably could have waited until July 3rd or something. Um, So I was like, oh, okay. There's that. Yeah. Um, The reality is... I expect any court case anymore to be escalated up through the courts. So I haven't seen or heard if this is going to, you know, they're going to try to contend and push it up to try to go to the federal Supreme Court or not. But yeah, Yeah. it's been rather interesting. I've been um, hearing because, you know, Twitter and stuff, I've been hearing a lot about this one and how it was a big win in a sense, you know, Mm -hmm. that the, the, Courts have decided to basically say this is this is not this is unconstitutional. This doesn't this doesn't work under the Constitution. This is not basic. And the main reason why is that it was too broad, right? It was too broad of a of a of a law or bill that, as you know, we've people when they when it happened, we're talking about it. You know, like where does this stop? Because it's has the potential to affect. Anything and everyone, any theater production, any, mm-hmm. you know, any bar or what have you putting on something, any, you know, really the, you know, the bigger issue was that it was, it had the potential to affect people who are trans. Um, yeah. Well, and right. Was, and, and one of the interesting things that the judge brought up as a hypothetical was that if a woman dressed as or impersonated Elvis, mm-hmm. they would be prosecuted by the law. Right. 
and 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 that was the whole thing that has been coming out about these court cases is that like the the root of it is that they're trying to outlaw tr- the ability for people to be trans mm-hmm. and yet at the same time like they're being so um wide with their concepts mm-hmm. that they don't realize the impacts yeah so like it's to the point that in some cases I haven't read all the legality of it, but there's an interpretation that if a person uses customizing items to alter their appearance, they could be found like breaking the law. So if a Mm -hmm. woman has had a double mastectomy Mm -hmm. and uses, you know, a breastplate or fake boobs or potentially has implants, that's breaking the law, you know, wearing a wig so right. uh, was, I guess you're going to have to get rid of all your like, you know, what did we used to call those things for men to hair pieces, <laughs> whatever, to <Toupees>. pays. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody probably calls them a unit. Um, but, but, you know, like that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. um, you know, is, is, was potentially getting swept up into all this. So, yeah, yeah. it was, it was. The laws were too broad and they weren't allowing for enough, they weren't giving enough room or giving too much room for interpretation or any like caveats, as it were. Mm-hmm. It was all across the board, these larger, larger sweeping like wording and ruling that would have made it really hard to anyone in a lot of ways, you know. Because where does where you know where is the line drawn? Is a woman wearing a men's shirt a part of this rule? It has the potential to be. Is a um, you know like the the thing I love the most is that people were their allies that were out there were very much against this, and we've seen it like Lizzo did when she did shows in Nashville in particular are. In, Tennessee, she invited drag performers to walk the stage with her and be on the stage with her and do those things. And I think that's an, an amazing um, show of support. Um, I, on a random YouTube like deep dive, I found a comedian who did a show and he did the show in a dress. It was an ugly dress, but you know he's like six foot something and you know. He's a he's a he's not a large man. He's just tall and 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 mm-hmm. you know average size. But he was like, you know, according to the laws, this is illegal. Even though all he was doing was wearing a dress, he didn't. To my knowledge, again, I wasn't looking for other things, but like, right? He just he wore like some tennis shoes and socks and then threw a dress on, and he did that in support of the, or it's not in support of, but in support of the LGBTQ community, right? Thing that this is bullshit. But it but it really starts to beg you, like, you know, to pay attention to things. Think about the field of entertainment. Mm-hmm. Dennis Rodman, infamously, like kind of in the 90s, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. or the early odds, gender bended, like just in public. 90s. Yeah. And like, you know, and I mean it, Dolly Parton was asked about this, I think, a month or two ago and was, like, worried that she might, you know, end up – she was kind of being quippy, but she was, like, yeah. she might get arrested because yeah. 90% of her is fake or whatever. I can't <laughs> quite remember the quote, but, you know, it's, like, you know, she's, like, this is kind of crazy. But, it, you know, when I think about this – so here, here's some food for thought. In today's landscape, would the artist formerly known as, then again known as Prince – be arrested for performing because they wore makeup and high heels like platforms while performing yeah. like i mean it peace. just what's that may you rest in peace yeah right but that yeah. but that's my whole point is like you know i mean i'm not even going far, as far back as liberace girl yeah um i mean but like it, i you get know is you elton mean. john not allowed to tour anymore i mean like it just it's so wild conceptual yeah. it it we see that we saw, and I think, you know, obviously this judge kind of agreed, like, this is ridiculous. This is st- stupid. Too, too many, like, what ifs. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that's kind of the issue that I had with it, that why it passed. Because there are far too many what ifs that contradict what you're trying to go for. We know what you were doing. We know who you were targeting. 
we know like why you brought this into the light this you know recently right but again you all hastily or whatever wrote this bill and left all of this up to these weird interpretations and without any full on guidelines you left it too open too broad and again in this way unconstitutional against the first amendment and that's where I'm happy that this happened and I'm glad that it happened. And I hope that this starts the, you know, domino effect of other laws like this getting repealed or downright, you know, never making it past like a desk. Um, that's my hope, mind you. That, that Right. And a lot of the legislation that's currently going on out there has this like really nefarious root quote unquote because the judge this judge district judge parker did say roughly the state has an express and righteous interest to protect its minors Mm -hmm. that's the nefarious root i'm referring to that it's like all in the the realm of the infamous simpsons mean won't somebody think of the children children. um but the judge also said putting a law like this in the books is not the way to go about that Mm mm-hmm which I thought was an interesting way of them saying, like, I don't, I haven't read the actual like determination, yeah. but I was like, I'm hoping that the judge didn't give them answers or solutions right. about how to change that. Right. You know, the, and, and what's so ironic to me is there's a whole population of people who were like, how dare you like tell me how to raise my children? Exactly. So there's a part of me that wants to say, okay, that's fine. If you want to have all the responsibility of raising your children, then fucking do it. Keep your kids away. Right. Like if if you you don't want them to be near a business that may corrupt your child, then don't take them out in public. Oh, my ass. Like, like, I mean, no, it's. But they don't yeah. see they don't see the hypocrisy yeah. of that concept of yeah. that stance. They're like, right. they're like, no, exactly. like I should be able to legislate that that puts you out of existence, and therefore I don't have to put forth the fucking effort to right. be a responsible parent. By the way, if you didn't know, this is all Tito shade. So there you go. Like that's <laughs> that's how we start rolling around here. We get a little impassioned yeah. on these shows. I'm like, come on, that's ridiculous. You know what is a responsible parent? parent that's willing to expose and explain all this to their children right but that takes being educated what i'm just gonna call it no like we've uh, we've, i I mean true job as a nation it's true if you're we've been fucking up since i don't know uh i don't know since we had since the beginning of the country probably like we've just been failing generation after generation after generation after generation of like being honest being forthright like having conversations i mean i think back to the 50s and 60s and how it was all like a big huge fucking cover-up like everything was beautiful and everything was fine and there was nothing wrong and then you know like the culture shock of the 60s and 70s and then we find out like oh no a lot of shit went down and we were evil yeah. people mm-hmm. come on you know anyways I'm getting on a soapbox. (sighs) So there's that. Um, So, yeah, like that. I agree with you, Damon. My hope would be that this is the beginning of like a trend legally where some of this stuff really gets challenged and and doesn't turn into anything. And I absolutely 100% agree with you, Jeff. I think it's, it's like if you want to, if like be a parent, as Jeff Carey was also saying, be a parent, explain things most of the time. Actually, I feel like 100% of the time, a child doesn't necessarily know what's going on. They don't know that it's a problem until someone makes it a problem. They don't know that it's an issue until someone makes it an issue. You know, this in particular, the, you know, the drag and, and doing story times and all that stuff and going to brunches and everything, like... I get it. Maybe you're not a big fan of it. And maybe it's not your bag and that's fine. All well and good. You cannot go. <laughs> you can just not go. You can just not take your kids. 
the story times, the things, they're open to anyone that wants to be there. You don't have to want to be there, but you don't get a right to say that it can't happen. Well, this kind of goes back to like the thing we used to say, I think in the 80s and the 90s, it's like, it came down to like, this is your discomfort. Like, you're the one that has the problem. You're the one that is uncomfortable. You're the one that is feeling out of sorts or yeah. doesn't understand. Which w- we all under understand that because we all mm-hmm. have that as a human experience. Change is difficult. It can be challenging. We don't understand things. It, it evokes fear and anxiety. Mm-hmm. But those things are necessary just as an existence. It teaches us, like, how to avoid danger. Mm-hmm. But as a as a species, we're taking that in a different direction and interpreting it as like, well, I'm scared of this thing, therefore it must be dangerous and it's going to cause harm. And it's like, no, you just don't understand it. There's a difference. Yeah, ignorance isn't also, isn't always bliss. It's oftentimes um, fear. Mm-hmm. Find it. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So speaking of legislative things, and um, there's also a link that we're going to provide on the ACLU mapping legislative attacks on LGBTQ rights. Um, this is really kind of fascinating, I think. Um, so the ACLU obviously has been one of the major uh representatives in terms of legal action when it comes to fairness uh, and equity under the law. And there's a whole section of their website um, about LGBTQ LGBTQ rights, and um, there's a current 2023 legislative session map. You can click on a state, um, Mm -hmm. and it lists the bills uh, within that particular state and what status they're in, if they've passed, been defeated, if they're um, in committee, out of committee, waiting to be signed. Um, And you can just kind of pop around and and see what's happening in different states. Um, It's very insightful, Mm -hmm. but also alarming. Yeah. just you know and and it's and one of those things that i guess i hadn't really thought that we needed um before but as of this recording it states that they're uh the aclu is tracking 491 anti-lgbtq bills in the u.s right. um and there's some color coding as to bills with zero versus one to three four to six seven to nine or ten plus um so I highly recommend that you go check it out um, yeah. and take a look at it because it'll give you some insights as to what's happening in your neck of the woods. Yeah. Basically. Um, yeah. Like even I was kind of surprised. I was like, oh, well, what's going on in PA? Hmm, that's nice. We've got three bills that are advancing all in the house. Mm-hmm. Great. Just great. I've got Ohio has six. One that was introduced just a couple of weeks ago. And five that are advancing. advancing. Um, it's I've knew I I knew I knew of some of these. Mm-hmm. Um, some I did not. And when I look through like some of the rules, because there's another we have another site that kind of maps a lot of them out a little better, gives a little bit. But again, I do appreciate ACLU's like coding and color coding about some of the things um but seeing it i'm like wow and it's funny because i look at this and three of these are marked as schools and education Mm -hmm. um and i'm just like i get where some of this is coming from i don't particularly care for it i actually don't fucking like it to be blunt and um and then I saw that one was um, healthcare, and I was trying to figure out that one. Oh, that one. Yeah, that fucking one. <laughs> Sorry. The Enact Ohio Saving Adolescents from Experimentation are the SAFE Act. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. absurd. 
Anyway, with that being said, um, I'm just going to say this because I'm in the mood. Each one of these, as I've been clicking on them randomly, and I look at who the sponsor is, it's another old white motherfucker. Like, and I am getting tired of this shit happening. It's been a bitch of mine in politics for a while, and I'm just like preaching to the choir here. But I'm just like, really, really. Anyways, yeah, yeah. yeah the one for healthcare in PA is the Gender Affirmation Therapy Statute of Limitations. So lovely, yeah. so lovely, and and. Wow. Wow. Well, there was 10 in Minnesota, and I'm like, shot. Yeah. Look at how many are in Texas. That I'm not shocked about. I mean, fair. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. The, it might be the most of the whole nation, I'm not sure. But yeah, there's there's been a lot. And um, one of the things is that in terms of like the book banning stuff that came out recently, um, the some of the laws that the the challenges legally, these different things that are happening in the country are being funded and backed primarily by very specific entities or persons. Um, mm -hmm. And so don't be surprised if you find that the language is very similar. Um, to other things that have been done and understandably, you know, the perspective is, oh, well, if it worked over here or if yeah. we think we have a really good chance with this thing, we're going to try it, you know, in as many places as we can Yeah. when it comes to that stuff. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, just, it, it's messy. It's messy and it's, it's, bob it's not bothersome. It's, it's annoying, <laughs> annoying and sad because mm -hmm. it feels it's like looking at this and kind of going through the the, the maps. There are very few areas um, in the United States. And granted, this is just the United States, everybody. So our international listeners, um, good luck to you. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we don't even know offhand yeah. what the resource would be to, to locate things necessarily for for that. But hopefully there are very few. there is like, something that you can find. Um, there are very few states that have nothing. Um, uh, oh. Wisconsin, I think is one. Yeah. Wisconsin, Illinois, New York, Delaware, Puerto Rico. And DC. And DC. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that somebody won't introduce yeah. some shit. I mean, it, if you if you kind of look at the map a little bit, you can kind of see these. It's, it goes from like gray to dark purple for those look if you're looking at the map, and you can see kind of almost this way gradation wave. I mean, there are still there are some larger areas where it's just solid pink, uh, purple, which you know, just below me um, in my home state, Kentucky. Um, is I'm mean, like, yeah. How many are in Kentucky? Oop, that's Tennessee. Ooh. Eleven in Tennessee. In oh, but Kentucky. they've all been defeated. Or most. Of oh, them. hallelujah. Two, two passed oh. in the law, and then like the rest are listed as defeated in Kentucky. Well, that's good. I love that it says dead. I know. I was <laughs> just gonna say it cracks me up that the ACLU is like defeated, dead, dead, and then it gives its date. She's dead. Yeah, several of these happened withdrawn. at the same time on the 30th of March. That's good. Good. I mean, so, you know, obviously these are, these are, um, there's still some here, but, um, you know, it, they're still there. So it's funny out of the 11, it looks like one, two. Oh, wow. Only nine, two. And nine out of 11 but, were defeated. Yeah. But two were passed, have been passed into law, so they're further along than some of our other, you know, like here in Ohio, for example, some of those states are right. interesting. What is this one? Oh, it's this. No, no fucking. I, I knew that would be a thing. It's the whole, like one of them, the 145 is, it's about inner schools 
athletics and that kind of shit, um, which makes sense considering Kentucky is a huge proponent, a huge like fan of like high school sports. Mm-hmm. Not just high, I mean, granted, this is not just high school, but that's sort of the big thing. So it makes sense that that one has passed. I don't like it, but it's the one that I'm, I'm surprised that I knew it was going to be. It is 150. So uh, part oh. of the reason that we wanted to bring this up for folks to understand is that um, most likely, if you live here in the U.S., your state has something on the board or did have it on the board, um, whether it got passed or it, it's, a, you know, uh, been defeated. But it brings back to you need to know what's happening on a local level in terms of politics. Mm-hmm. Um and this is just at the state level. This isn't leave in your local jurisdiction. This right. isn't your county. This isn't your parish. This isn't your like city, right. your municipality. It isn't your school district. Like there's so many levels of things that are taking place that I admit I spent my 20s, 30s, and 40s not really paying attention to this kind of stuff. And it wasn't until I ended up in my position where I work actually in county government that I started really paying attention because I didn't understand how much influence and effect these bodies have. So, right. you know, if I want to get certain things done, I have to pay attention to the political climate and I need to understand what the structure is. So I've got a county executive, which is not, you know, something everybody has. And then underneath them as an administration, there's a whole county council that um, is a separate body. And sometimes the executive and the council are at war with each other. That's always fun. Mm -hmm. He says with sarcasm, Um, you know, and then there's a city mayor, right? There's all these things. So, you know, and, and we're now that we're in pride month, I mean, I'm part of the local, you know, pride Alliance and we formed a safety committee this year to prepare for potentially outcomes. And we're working Mm. in the county um, and taking things very seriously. And, um, it's it's a bit overwhelming to look at the you know the landscape of things but we're very pleased that a lot of people are taking this very seriously yeah and looking at it and saying like you know we understand you know the potential of what the turnout could be and how we need to be prepared for that and what that could look like yeah so yeah it'll be an interesting uh it's experience rather interesting to me Cause you mentioned, you mentioned safety and that's been something off and on that has been on my mind for pride every year. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, every year we've had these, we've had issues. We know that we we've had, you have the occasional protesters, you have the ones, the religious fanatics that think that this is all a sin and all of that shit. And you have all of that there and you don't necessarily, you kind of sometimes pass it off as, you know, what have you, and you're just going to, you know, wear your rainbows and run around and do their thing, do your things. And sometimes I feel like that's the way to be. But I do think this year in particular is one year where I really do want to stress that you need to be on guard. Um, it's the way it is right now. And it feels weird, but it, that's what I feel is the case. And friends of mine have been posting because we've, you know, kicked, Pride has kicked off in, um, we actually had Nordic, Northern Kentucky Pride this weekend. And um, people have been saying things, you know, um, you know, let someone know where you're, where you are, like share your, your, your locations with people, um, never go anywhere by yourself kind of thing, you know, bring buddies, go out with friends, you know, what have you. And I think that's should always be the case, but I think this year in particular, I think it should definitely be the case. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm not saying, I'm saying this because we know that the landscape, if these, what we've been seeing so far just today has been is an example of it is that we're still targets and there are people out there who will take that target to the extreme um and i mean just i was i was uh, i follow is it tizzy int t-i-z-z-y-e-n-t on the twitter 
I think that's him. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, that's him. He does a lot of these videos where he kind of calls out things and gives you, like, talks about things. And he was just talking about how their, the recent Target, you know, pride, like, being, you know, I don't want to say attacked, but that's the word that comes to mind. But, like, people having issues with their pride merchandise being out on display and going out and throwing, you know, knocking it over. But people have been calling about going to these locations or going to a target and causing a scene. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's a time to be aware and be safe. This isn't, um, this isn't the same prize we're used to. Um, unfortunately, hence the raft and the demon and like, you know, we need to be on guard. We need to be careful. We should be fighting, absolutely. And pride should always keep going as much as it can, but also be aware of your surroundings, be aware of who's there and what's going on. Um, it, it sucks. It really fucking sucks, but that's kind of the way it's going to be. Um, I was with friends yesterday and I was laughing about pride and I don't march in the parades anymore. And the main reason I don't march in the parades anymore is because I'm old and fat and I don't have the stamina anymore. I just, <laughs> I, I did it a couple of times and yeah, I'm good. Um, I can't do the parade anymore. I just know my body cannot take it. So, um, with um, that, you know, I usually go to the festival and I usually now, since in my role with the chorus, I'm usually at the booth and that's my plan. I'm going to be at the booth, I'm going to hopefully be there with other people and I'm going to engage with people as much as I can. Maybe take some time to walk around a bit and see things, but Pride has, I don't want to say lost its magic. I mm -hmm. think it's lost its grip on me in a way mm -hmm. um it's just a um it's an event and it's a thing and it, it's wonderful and I, I and i proudly support it but for me personally it's i always worry about the worst case scenario um and this falls back to was it 20? Yeah, 2016, 2015 um, with Orlando. Mm, yeah. And um, that was that was the first year that I found myself genuinely scared because there were people who had nothing to do with pride, nothing to do with, you know, they were not LGBTQ to my knowledge. They were just people who had guns and wanted to be there to help. And I was like, I don't know. I, I can't, I don't do not want to be around that. It, I don't think it happened. Don't get me wrong. So it was fine, but I did. Um, I, that's the, I, that was one of the years I posted something in like the, like Facebook, the Pride Festival's events, and I said something to the effect of, like, I don't know if I want to come because I'm scared. And I had people reach out to me, and I had people on the post kind of say things like, don't, you know, don't let them, let that fear take you down. And I did listen to it, and I decided, okay, then the idea for that is to make a plan. So I made one. Um, I did not, I did go to Pride. I did not stay long. Uh, I arrived a little bit, um, What's the word? I, I arrived around the time that the chorus was performing. I made my way through Pride, did a, like some walkthroughs, said hello to some people, and then got with the chorus and performed. Um, and then not too long after that, uh, walked around some more, and then Jim picked me up. And we went, we actually had an event that night, so we went to that. I think it was Christian Chenoweth. 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 Ooh. Blah, 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 blah. Chenoweth? Chenoweth. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. 
Um, and it worked. It helped. It made me feel comfortable. And that was the best thing for me at that time. But so, again, if you're going to Pride, make a plan, go with the buddy, be safe. I like the idea that people are saying about if you can share your um, location, share your location however you can. And then, you know, be safe and be cautious and be aware of what's going on. Can't hear you, Jeff, or can't hear you, Gary. Take three. Sorry, I muted myself. <laughs> we had a little strange tech thing happen for a moment there while you were talking. Um, no, I agree with you. Like, you know, that's one of the things that we're thinking about in terms of our event, Ac access, entrance, exit, uh, you know, accessibility, just, you know, um, potential hazards, um, things along those lines. And yeah, um, I think as, it, as if you go to an event, if you're planning to attend more than ever, you kind of need to take a moment and, and for your own self interest preservation, be, you know, a person who observes, pay attention, look around, think about an exit strategy. And some people may not do this. Others may do this naturally. If you mm -hmm. were raised in an environment of fear and you thought that you needed to protect yourself, this may be second nature. You might not think about the fact that you need to have a way to get from wherever you are to a safe space. Um, right. There was a video that came out maybe a month ago, I want to say, that was made um, that a lot of people were kind of alarmed by. Um, and it was from the FBI, I believe, and it was a recreation of a shooting incident. Uh, and it takes place at a bar. Mm. And it's a mock representation of the things you can do to save yourself if there was a live shooter incident. Um, whether you're behind the bar, in front of the bar, um, in a different space. And I think a lot of people were very much alarmed by it because they felt like, it was triggering and mm -hmm. that it, you know, kind of represents some of actual real events that have happened. And I watched it and even I was like, wow, like they're really making it abundantly clear. Like they're not shying away from it, but they're not being gratuitous. Uh huh. And I understand why people were kind of alarmed by it. And yet at the same time, I'm like, the whole point of this video is to make an impact and to make you think. Uh -huh. And to give you some some skills to take away to be prepared. So if something were to happen, you know what to do. Um, so it, 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 I think about that when it comes to, you know, us going to events and things and having different stuff going on. It's like, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, it, it's not exactly an enjoyable experience to have that mindset, to have that, you know, kind of. Yeah picture and yet at the same time like i said some people they keep that in mind if you've ever been a victim of uh, a hate crime or just anything in general you might be a little bit more vigilant and paying mm -hmm. attention to things i've had my vehicles broken into um and so when that happens you just kind of think to yourself when you park a vehicle in a certain area like you might pay attention and think about like are there cameras around here that can like see things and, you know, possibly record an incident if it were to happen, um, you know, yeah. and pay attention. I'm a big proponent of like, if your gut says something like, yeah, you know, maybe that's, you know, mm -hmm. a way of whatever you might believe in giving you a message and being like, mm, maybe you don't need to go there or do that thing. Um, then again, maybe it's just gas. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, true. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you just need to be. You just need to be burped. Like the, the, maybe you just maybe you just need to find a port john or something and just break a little wind, you know. <laughs> or if you're outdoors, just let it happen. <laughs> There's so many. If especially just, like at a private, but event, pay attention about, to who's down down I mean, true, for you, okay? True. If yeah, there true. are if there are little people, whether they be children or not, you know. Don't don't be crop dusting and, and gassing people out, okay? <laughs> if you can help it. Just saying. Drop a booty bomb, like 
and just walk away. Just let it like fall like a landmine. No, no. But um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's again Pride in twenty twenty three. I think, as I said, is just going to be. I think you just have to be like you said, vigilant is a good word. Um, do what you feel comfortable doing. Um, and, you know, let, let your, like you said, let your gut guide your way. Um, the last thing you want to do, is, I, I know we say that, you know, fear and not doing anything means that the other people won. And I want to say, maybe, mm-hmm. um, maybe, um, I think, as you said, self-preservation is key. I know it sucks. I know this is a, you know, pride is every month or or every year and you want to, you know, take part in it. But at the end of the day, do what's best for you. Don't let the allure sway, don't quite know know the word, of, of being of being engaged with your community at pride be the thing that deters that deters you from doing something that you don't that you are pushes you into doing something that you want to do. Mm. <laughs> well, and and I think one of the key things to keep in mind is um I think we spent years, a handful of years, not quite a decade like being in a quasi blissful state Mm -hmm. where we were like oh we've made all these advances and like we've you know been achieving equity and blah 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 and so like i i feel like the vast majority of the community walked away from some things Mm -hmm. and really kind of left some of our our family behind and Mm -hmm. the biggest thing that we've been seeing that about is you know the anti-trans movement that's been taking place right and, you know, it's I'm even seeing it in social media. Like, there's this whole movement about the LGB without the T. Oh, God. That, that. that insanity. Um, you know, lesbians, gays, and bisexual persons who want nothing to do with, like, trans individuals because their their belief system is aligning with, you know, anti-trans stuff. And I'm just like, wow. Like, what part of, you know, what part of being ostracized for who you authentically are do you not get like it is obvious that it's not sinking in or you're not right. under, you're not comprehending the difference i will own i have had my own ignorance when it comes to the trans community um someone i don't know if i want to say came out but someone identified themselves as trans to me uh recently i did not know um and I really had to sit with that. Um, I kind of got emotional about it because I realized that this to me in a way was a coming out and that this person was doing it in confidence and and being private about it and didn't want me to talk to other people to identify them. And I appreciate that. But I also was like, how far removed am I that I'm turning, you know, a milestone age this year and I'm just – not realizing this is still the experience that people have, that they are, you know, choosing to live their authentic selves and yet live in, I don't know if I want to say fear, but with concern about like how people will react and what they will think and those kind of things. Um, So yeah, it's been, it's been interesting, but it's also as several people have said to me, alarming, uh, mm-hmm. scary, disconcerting. Um, one of the other links that we're going to have on the website is the 2023 anti-trans bills tracker. Um, it's on a website called translegislation.com. And it is kind of like the ACLU one. Um, it lists that there are 556 bills across 49 states. 80 of them have passed. 372 are active and 104 have failed. Uh, you can click around on the different states to get further information, you can read up on what's passed, um, what the bills say, those type of things. Um, yeah. And, you know, uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is, I'm sorry, like, 
I was misled in my college years when I came out, the stories I was told about uh, the origins of the gay liberation movement um, were not authentic. They were, in essence, whitewashed. They were, you know, altered for the narrative that people wanted it to be, which is really messy, yeah. um, you know, and it, it's still kind of happening in a way today, yet I'm really happy to see and please that people are like, no, 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 do not disregard, learn your history, know the truth. There have been trans individuals around for as long as humanity has existed. There mm -hmm. have been individuals who have been recognized in various ways. In um, indigenous communities, there have been all sorts of titles or alternate like wording used to recognize individuals. Um, yeah. In the Native American communities, it's been rather recent. I think it was like in the 90s. I watched a fascinating YouTube video about how a um, a professor, I want to say, I think it was in academia, came up with the concept of two-spirited and how there's sort of been a debate in indigenous communities about that as a label, yet mm -hmm. most of them, from my understanding, have adopted it as a kind of umbrella term for yeah. individuals um, who in most of the indigenous communities were seen as like of a certain stature who kind of represented both what we would consider the masculinity and the femininity. Um, mm -hmm. and, and in many times they held a position within their community um, they could be, you know, uh, individuals seen as leaders. They could be, you know, um, higher counselors, um, those kind of things. And so the fact that all of that has been, uh, I guess, revealed is really important. I feel that we know this stuff and that we, you know, recognize that we don't leave behind our family, right. no matter what it is. And, and even though I don't fully understand all the aspects of our community, um, I don't personally think I know anybody that's intersex, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to disregard them. They have every right to authentically be themselves and be recognized for that, whatever that may be. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I may not fully grasp or understand why people make some of the decisions that they do, but, you know, my, the, I guess I want to say barber, you know, the person who cuts my hair, um, their spouse is a tattoo artist and is covered in ink. And we had this conversation recently that a lot of people stare at them because they stand out in a crowd um, mm -hmm. and they don't do it for the attraction of attention. They did it because that's their artistic representation. Mm -hmm. But it got me thinking about how like, you know, our society is not comfortable with difference. It's like, I, I like my things to be consistent, to be, you know, to put them in a box, to put them in a label, because that's how our brains work. Like, we we like a structure of organization, something to give us a concept right. of how we address something, and then, and then obviously the familiarity. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's important that we're aware, mm -hmm. you know, shit's going on. Um, yeah. In various ways, you know, and um, there, there's a part of me that feels like, well, if you really want to go this route about this whole gender affirming treatment stuff, um, I, I wish there was an effective way to turn it on its head and be like, well, if you're going to do that, then there's a lot of things that you shouldn't be doing. Right. Like you shouldn't be having gender reveal parties you shouldn't be like doing things to push upon an individual your interpretation or your output or your perspective right like if that's the argument that you're going to use then mm -hmm. it like it's this whole old saying what's good for the goose is good for the gander like i but i don't know if that's a, a good effective way because obviously yeah. it's not gonna yeah the, they're probably not the, gonna hear that argument yeah they don't want to hear if it means changing their status quo they're not gonna they're not gonna want to change that they they you know we always we, we all know the stories we've all been there you know asking like five six year olds when you're gonna have a girlfriend or boyfriend or anything along those lines or um any all of those things all of the like like you know to be a groom and all that stuff where you know in mock weddings and um 
all that shit. It, it's it's all out there, and it's happened. Ha- it's happened. We all knew it. We've known about it. You know, as long as we've been around, and it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. But because it's a heterosexual bent, then it's fine. It's totally okay. You know, the what was it the other day? It was. I was watching a video on um, Twitter, and it was actually, it was, you know, it was a video of a um, a whole school, uh, it was her children, she was in a classroom, she's a middle school teacher, and um, they made it seem like someone was, some middle schoolers were having a fight, and she ran to the room, and it was actually her fiancé there to propose. And it was like everyone, like there were so many comments about, oh, this is so sweet and very cute. And then then I realized, like, but that's imagine if two men or two women had wanted to do that. Would y'all been okay with that? Would you have thought it was cute and sweet then? Would you have been like, oh, that's Mm -hmm. so wonderful. People get married. No, you probably wouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and I think that's what people are, are misunderstanding is the legacy of human existence has been about the majority. Right. The majority is given the power. The majority is the one that makes the decisions. And that still is true to this day. Yep. But as the world has become more enmeshed as a global commerce, as a like as an awareness of each other's cultures and differences, I think there has been a growing I don't know. I, I'm I'm pausing. I don't know if I want to say. I, I don't want to say appreciation. I don't want to say understanding. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not so sure about awareness, but there has been a growth of. Uh, I don't know if I want to say recognition. There's just been <laughs> more. Well, no, because I feel like like that's where the that's where the schism is coming. Like yeah. while there is more, uh, of the minority. Hmm. It does it like, you know, being shown or having a voice. That's what it is. Yeah. It doesn't mean that the majority is comfortable with that. I think the majority right. is fucking freaked out and scared. Yeah. And they don't like the idea that, you know, that this is changing and, yeah. you know, that they will be in the minority. And it's yeah. like, well, maybe I don't know what to tell you. Like, I don't. Yeah. And, and that's that's fair. That's a very true point. I think, again, there's a. We, you know, we've seen it happen over the years. You know, if you watch media and what have you, Drag Race, like we, we mentioned RuPaul Drag Race at the beginning of this, and that's sort of a big sort of weird step. It's a, it's allowed people who have never seen the art form before see it on their televisions and for the most part regard it as um, entertainment. Mm-hmm. Something we've known for years you know, it's just like Pose and Le- um, Legendary, those shows where they were showing all this like ballroom culture that none of us were really fully aware of. Yes, we had Vogue in the 90s, but that was a totally different thing. That's a really, 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 really just simple, washed out version of it. Mm-hmm. But you had all of this stuff and you're seeing it now for maybe the first time. And I think that's what it is. Like people are scared that now these things are showing up and being put out there as part of mainstream. And they're not okay with that. You know, imagine it, it, it's just, it's that, um, it's that awareness, I think is a good word. You're now becoming aware of other things that you in your bubble were never fully aware of and you're scared of that bubble bursting because that's been your protection that's been what has keep, kept you from you know at least in a way it's kept you from being exposed to all of these other things mm. well it's here and it's going to be here and it's always been here you just didn't know about it and here we are showing it to you and you can't you could escape it. You can just turn the fucking TV off. But you, you're, you're finding yourself being unable to quote unquote escape it. 
And that's where I think the fear is coming from. There's mm-hmm. a fear that it's going to be everywhere and you have no control over it and you can't stop it. But the big thing is they don't give a shit about you. We don't give a shit about you. All we really want to do is just be ourselves and be left the fuck alone. Just live our lives and do like we do. Like you do all every day, every morning, every evening, all the time. You're able to do all of that shit. We just want to do the same thing. Just and to be left alone. But no, no, it's it's it's. It's there. It's a part of it. it. It's something for whatever reason. And because we're the majority, we get to say whether it it's, gets to purvey or, or, or be out there as much as we want it. Yeah. Well, and I think to your point, Damon, one of the things that's happening is, is like they just have a different mindset. They're not looking at it from a perspective of like allowing people – to live their lives as they choose, just like they do as the majority. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, we've said it for years, kind of as a tongue in cheek statement about straight men being scared of gay men, because gay men might treat straight men like straight men treat women. Right. It's like, Oh, is that what your fear is based in? You're worried that, that like you're going to be treated the way you've treated others. Well, Baby, you should have been treating people as decent human beings from the beginning, and that wouldn't be a problem, now would it? That part. <laughs> right? That part. And it <sighs> can be and it could be tr- frustrating and challenging when you think you're a decent person and you treat people decently, because then you're like, I don't see what the big damn deal is. And it's like, yeah. well, you're not part of the situation. Right. Yeah. But you can be, you can, you can, you can be part of the solution or you can be part of the problem. Which do you want to be a part of? Well, and I, and I think, you know, we, we struggle as a society to connect with other people, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and to, to understand what it's like to be in other people's shoes, basically. Yeah. You know, unless unless you've been I've said this several times and I've I've talked about it with work. If you've been othered, I think it's easier for you to comprehend what people are going through in their lives. And I've used it several times with my coworkers as examples of witnessing previous coworkers make statements or do things. And I'm kind of like, wow, they really don't get it like they don't understand you know, and I've I've even said this recently at work. I talk about the hormonal difference between men and women. Um, you know, that sex sexuality libido, like mm-hmm. your your H word, it's very different. Mm-hmm. And you know, um, you know, and I actually broke it down recently at work and I was like, I don't know, I, I said I don't know how to make this any simpler. Men want to make more. That's the simplicity of it. Um, like the the biological urge is to make more. And and I didn't get this crude. It was right on the tip of my tongue, but I'm in a professional environment. So uh, what I did not say that I'll say here is if it's a hole, they'll stick it in. Like it, it don't matter. Like they're like they're <laughs> they're, they're not going to care because the biological urge is to spread mm-hmm. the seed, whether or not it's effectively causing, you know, conception. Feels good. Well, and that's right. That's where it all goes sideways. Like. It feels good. It feels good to have a nut. The dick feels good getting hard. It feels good to put your dick in things. It feels good to have a dick inside of things. Like, like the whole system is faulty because all of that pleasure-driven stuff is part of the whole concept of making more. But it also backfires because, you know, it's like if we if we really rampantly, you know, procreated as much as we fuck, like the 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 world would have died a long time ago. <laughs> Because we would have taken up all the resources, you I know. Mean, where's the where's the where's the lie? So you know, I look at it this way, and I'm like, well, that's where that's why some of us are swallowing, you know, the children before they're born, because you know that just stops things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gary. Hey, I had I had to I had to renew my going to hell bus card. I mean, oh uh, yeah, <laughs> to be able to say things like that just 
for this year enjoyment of it because I certainly don't think that you know people yeah. will think otherwise. Um, no, but the reality is, is you know that that people struggle with. If it's yeah. not in my life, it's not my experience, it's not my bubble, I, I don't get it, I don't understand it. And there's nothing wrong with that, it's just, it exists. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hope that people are willing to be open and, and understand and attempt to, you know, um, just learn, you know? Yeah. See it, See it in a different way, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So I hope that people are going to, you know, enjoy this month. Normally this episode gets saved towards the end, but I really felt because of some things that have been going on this year specifically and that, um, that lawsuit in Tennessee, the law being found unconstitutional. I was like, well, it's a start to a month. We've got a couple more weeks to go. We'll see how this this whole thing plays out. Um, I'm hopeful that it can be an uneventful month and, yeah. you know, and, and we can go back to our blissful ignorance of bitching about how corporations are just out to get our damn gay dollars. I mean, um, that part too. <laughs> he says, as he waves a rainbow colored fan that he most likely bought from a website somewhere. Backboy.com. <laughs> <laughs> if it's gay owned and operating. Yeah, let's find out. Anyway, <laughs> continue. Rabbit hole. Anyways, speaking of holes, like... it's not that show, is it? I don't know. Is that the end? Oh, <laughs> I was th- I was thinking about our what's going on when we do Twitter picks. Anyways, <laughs> in any case. Uh, as, as a quick uh, scheduling addendum item for everybody, not just our patrons, because uh, I didn't want to save it for post-show. We're taking a week off. Another one. We won't, Well, this one's planned. <laughs> we, will, we will not be here the next week. But pay attention to your podcast feeds. There will be a little present for you. Ooh. That's all I'm going to say. Ooh. Let's, uh, let's Scooby-Doo it. <laughs> Anyways, that's the end. When you contact us, let us know your pride. I believe the Proud Out Loud shirts are still up. You should probably make a new version of that. In any case, uh, you can pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com. She has an email, it comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 Talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud, the appropriate place of the URL. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on the YouTube video, and don't forget to ding that bell to get notifications. You can also join our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. You can find out when we're planning and recording these shows by checking out our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. You can get various accoutrements such as the Consent of My Poor Play shirt in various different styles, such as a General Pride one. Uh, actually, I think you're both wearing General Pride ones. No. No? You're... Damon is wearing the, the inclusive Pride color shirt, so mm-hmm. it has all the colors. I'm wearing a Bear Pride particular consent is my foreplay and jeff i think yours is the new design which is the skin tones yes got one of the kind of like athletic breathable one. Ooh. Mm. i've been liking that style lately feels like it stays cleaner for some reason i feel like i could be wrong uh, that's at zezzle.com slash comes out loud. Uh, some of those designs were designed by Smashy, such as the consensus by four play based design, and we just colored it different colors. Put a little different logo for different things. Anyways, <laughs> designed by Smashy at smash at tpublic.com slash user slash smashy bear. You can find more of his stuff. You can also become a patron for us at patreon.com slash comes out loud or send us a donation at people.me slash comes out loud. 
You can find us on any of the podcasting platforms. Help put us by light, liking and reviewing us. Uh, reading us five stars would be appreciated. You can find me anywhere on the internet as box at box puppy box at box something or other. Damon. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. And if you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now.